Spain's delightful capital, Madrid, is one of the world's fairest cities. Once you stroll along her broad boulevards, such as the Calle de Alcala, you'll agree with experienced travelers who name her queen of European capital. A queen must have a palace, and Madrid has one, reflecting 18th century charm. Her old city hall has known centuries, filled with conflict and changing regimes. Famous Prado Museum is a worthy rival to the Uffizi in Florence and the Louvre in Paris. A fine boulevard called Paseo del Prado is bordered by gardens and ornamented at intervals by fountains. One of special grandeur is that honoring Cibele, goddess of the earth. Alfonso XII, next to the last of the Spanish kings, overlooks famed Retiro Park from a nautical pedestal. You cannot be long in Madrid, however, without sensing the tremendous surge of new growth and expansion. Modern homes and apartments are springing up in residential areas. Edificio España is Madrid's most modern skyscraper, housing a new hotel and numerous fine shops. Spain, like the rest of the world, is air-minded. This the new air ministry. Madrid's university, completely destroyed during Spain's civil war, is being rebuilt on a magnificent scale. An aluminum statue before the medical building depicts old age passing the torch of learning to youth on the horse. Madrid has her theaters, bullfights, and sporting events to entertain visitors. Villa Rosa is a supper club, hosting a pretentious pool and terrace for daytime fun. At night, top flight entertainment and leading name bands for dancing make Villa Rosa a must on your list for holiday fun. To thoroughly enjoy Spain, visitors should make use of Atesa's friendly service. Atesa has offices throughout Spain. Here the home office in Madrid. Atesa provides deluxe, all-expense motor coach tours to every part of Spain. A one-day excursion or a complete month-long holiday may be economically arranged through this great travel organization. Atesa also operates a drive-yourself fleet of automobiles and has chauffeur-driven cars for hire. Leading travel agents everywhere recommend a Tesa tour. Let us join this tour, a one-day excursion from Madrid to Toledo and return. Construction of Toledo's impressive cathedral began in 1227 and continued 226 years. Artists and craftsmen of Spain France and Italy devoted their entire lives to its decoration, creating magnificent sculpture such as this. Toledo's finely tempered steel, said to be the best in all the world, is still hand wrought into swords and daggers of the kind used by knights of old. Toledo stands on a high hill overlooking the river Tarkas. Toledo is one of Spain's oldest cities, occupied by the Romans 200 years before Christ and the Carthaginians before that. Within her walls, this town is a jumble of ancient buildings along streets so narrow, today's automobiles often dare not enter. The Atesa people believe their clients enjoy these trips more if the coaches are not crowded. They have ample equipment to provide comfortable accommodations for everyone. Oh yes, be sure to bring your camera. Pictures will help you share your adventures with friends after your return home. And surely this is a panorama to tempt any photo fan. Toledo seems to offer a never-ending parade of interest. This place was a great center of wealth under Moorish rule. 
and later the residence of the kings of Castile until Philip II made Madrid his capital in the late 1500s. But now, back aboard your coach, you have other sights to see. Another excursion from Madrid, which may be made in one day, is back to Escorial. Tourists enjoy climbing to the chair-shaped rock where, at some distance, King Philip is said to have watched the construction of this huge building. Philip II was an exceptionally religious monarch. He built Escorial to venerate St. Lawrence. Most of Spain's kings are entombed here. Segovia, where Isabella was proclaimed queen, also is near Madrid and offers two admirable sites. First, the Roman aqueduct, 1,800 years old, rising nearly 100 feet above street level. This structure contains not one bit of steel, nor a single trowel of mortar. The stones are fitted and laid with jeweler's precision. Truly, a lasting monument to the engineers of old. The other awe-inspiring site is a wonderfully grand castle called the Alcazar. Surely, this is Spain's most impressive castle, and many name it the most picturesque in all the world. And when viewed from this angle, it looks just as a castle in a fairy tale should. If you visit Spain during the summer months, by all means, take time to go to San Sebastian, the summer capital in the north. During July and August, many governmental activities are officially transferred to this resort city. San Sebastian has a delightful landlocked harbor, beckoning yachtsmen with a lure as irresistible as the song of the Lorelei. Hotels and apartments of every category are numerous, yet reservations are a must. There is a strong flavor of Paris about this town. You may even sometimes wonder if this is the River Seine. Then again, when you have your first glimpse of the sparkling crescent-shaped beach, you'll surely say it's exactly like real. But whether it be Rio or Paris that rises in your memory, you'll soon learn San Sebastian is holiday heaven to all Spain. Over on the Mediterranean coast, just south of Barcelona, there is an enchanting little city, Sitges. 364 days of the year, Sitges drowses peacefully in the Mediterranean sun. But Two months after Easter, on Corpus Christi Day, this place comes alive. Special trains bring gay groups from Barcelona and other cities farther distant. True, there are a few tourists in the crowd, but fundamentally, this is a Spanish throng turning out for a Spanish event. For months, flower growers have fondly tended plants that they might reach perfect maturity for today. The last 24 hours, carnation picking has been in progress, and every conceivable delivery conveyance has carried the blooms to sieges. Flowers are bought today, not by the dozen, but by the armful. Meanwhile, the men folk chalk designs on the street pavement. Other willing hands cover these intricate patterns with petals cut from literally millions of fresh flowers. Residents of one street unite in an effort to better the work of their neighbors. This is a community project and everyone helps. In the village square, volunteers begin a large carpet to complement a temporary altar which will be erected there. 
No Spanish festival is complete without these giant figures of the king and queen. What their significance is seems a secret lost in the pages of time. By early afternoon, some of the carpets are complete and others nearly so. The throng of sightseers wends its slow, appreciative way along each narrow street. A judging committee will award prizes for winning designs. The carpet before the altar has been completed in a religious motif. These patterns are worked out by the residents of each street during months of previous planning and are closely guarded secrets until the day of the festival. With prizes and honors at stake, each group fondly hopes they have a blue ribbon winner. Judges awarded first prize to this masterpiece. In the late afternoon, a solemn procession leaves the cathedral and slowly makes its way along these flower-covered streets to the little altar in the square. As the shuffling feet of the marchers tramp out the essence of the flowers, a rich perfume permeates the air, mingling with the strains of distant music and the closer rhythmic chant of holy words in Latin. As a benediction to Corpus Christi Day in Peaches, twilight comes, greeted by the flickering flames of countless candles. Barcelona is the great city of northeastern Spain. She outstrips Madrid in commerce and industry. Barcelona is the largest city of the Mediterranean Sea her population exceeding that of either Marseille or Naples. This marvelous street, Paseo de Gracia, is one of the grandest avenues in all Europe. Catalonia Square is the hub of activity of busy place. If your Spanish is good, you can read the sign, food for the pigeon. Of course, the pigeons can't read but they seem to know the corn is intended for them. Barcelona is a bustling seaport. You can count the ships and flags of many nations along these docks. Since history began, ships of the world have called at Iberian ports. Here is an exact replica of the Santa Maria Christopher Columbus sailed to the New World nearly 500 years ago, cramped quarters indeed for 90 men on a 70-day ocean voyage. The National Palace was built for the exposition of 1929 and now serves as the Fine Arts Museum of Catalonia. Here, Barcelona plays host to the International Trade Fair. Antonio Gaudí, an architect, left his mark on Barcelona. When he died some years ago, this church dedicated to the Holy Family was under construction as his effort to create a new style. Only the facade or front was complete. The building has never been finished. Some call Gaudí a genius and others simply smile. More recent monuments as this one commemorating the Civil War seem to blend unobtrusively with the fountains and magnificent buildings of yesteryear. Truly, Barcelona is a wonderful city. North of Barcelona, you spend hours, spellbound by simple farmland panoramas stretching in all directions. Here you find substantial farm homes like this one swathed in purple bougainvillea so luxuriant it almost hides the plot. Here the women of Spain are making lace today in the same exquisite hand-spun pattern so eagerly sought for court costumes of royalty in days when golden scepters held sway. But for travelers, the irresistible lure in this land is the Costa Brava, 
a masterpiece of scenic splendor, unexcelled on this continent or any other. Here is matchless Mediterranean beauty, mountains crowding close on one hand, and on the other, inviting stretches of blue water and sparkling sandy beach. This estate graces a coast little changed since seagoing Phoenicians ran their tiny ships ashore. And later, the galleys of ancient Greece and Rome dropped anchor in these same sheltered coves. This is Tosa de Mar, Tosa by the Sea, one of the lovely villages along this 110-mile stretch of sun-drenched shore. With hotel accommodations at amazingly low cost, it is little wonder the Costa Brava region is rapidly becoming a mecca for tourists from every part of the world. Probably the most convenient way to taste the thrill of travel in this land of legend and romance is in an Atesa automobile with a native driver. When these fellows tell you the half-forgotten stories of the past, history comes alive. The ruined and crumbling walls of medieval castles seem whole again. And you relive the wars and invasions and pirate raids which troubled the dwellers along this coast for well over a thousand years after the collapse of the Roman Empire. Now let's go south from Barcelona, but first a stop for lunch at the Parador Beni Carlo. The Spanish State Tourist Department operates numerous little paradors or hotels in locations where good food and comfortable lodging could not otherwise be easily obtained. It's another expression of Spain's enduring hospitality. In the larger cities, you have a wide choice of hotel accommodation. These folks from New York City, touring Spain by a Tesa automobile, had chosen the Miramar in Malaga. The Miramar is Malaga's finest. Atesa lodges many of their tours here. Let us join such a group for a scheduled sightseeing trip. After a leisurely breakfast, you join your tour in the spacious lobby. The coach is waiting at the hotel entrance. So aboard you go, eager for the new adventures today will bring. Malaga has an enormous appeal to many travelers because of her balmy climate, her bright, sunny days and cool, starlit nights. Each Atesa tour is accompanied by an English-speaking guide, thoroughly familiar with the cities and places visited. An item of interest here is the building in the right background. It's a grain elevator disguised to keep the city beautiful. Back again to your coach and your whisk to another place of interest. If you choose at some stop to let your group go on ahead while you remain with the coach, you can sense in the envious glances of the natives their longing wish to experience such luxurious travel. Or could it be your handsome driver is the real attraction? The steep hill called Gibraltar is topped by an old Moorish fortress. From this vantage point, 
you have a magnificent view over the sea and down upon the city. Sometimes you wonder if the rulers of old chose their fortress location for military might alone, or if they too wanted a view. Thus with an Atesa tour in a matter of hours, you can see and enjoy sights it might take days to find on your own. The tour folder lists this afternoon as free. This means time to explore the hotel and garden. If you enjoy swimming or basking in the sun, you can do either or both. You'll not be alone, however, for the Miramar pool is a popular place. Some more hardy travelers will visit the tourist office asking advice on the best place to shop for some wanted souvenir, or perhaps seeking some little known place down a narrow, twisting street. But however you spend the afternoon, next morning finds you one and all aboard your overland yacht, bound for adventure in other places, places famous in song and story. Nearing Granada, you drive through some of the world's most beautiful countryside, a land of warm valleys protected by lofty peaks of the Sierra Nevada range. In Granada, the Alhambra Palace of the Moorish King is the marvel to be seen. Situated on a lofty hill overlooking the city, this building is an exquisite gem of Moorish art. One legend tells of the day when the fountain in the court of lions ran red with the blood of 30 young noblemen, beheaded as an example to others who might covet the harem of a king. The profuse and delicate carvings in alabaster and marble are always of a geometrical design, for Moorish religion decreed it wrong to use any living animal as a pattern. This old palace of an Arabian prince is now the government-operated Parador San Francisco, a small but wonderfully interesting place with gorgeous gardens and an out-of-this-world view across the valley to Henerolisi Gardens, or the Gardens of the Queen. Visit these delightful paths on a quiet day when only bird songs are heard above the sprinkling splash of the fountain, then you can appreciate the moor's love of running water. Coming from a dry, arid Africa, finding here in the mountains a perpetual source of water, the moor could vision nothing more lovely than flowing fountains. Seville, capital of Andalusia, many miles from the sea, is an active port joined to the Atlantic by a navigable river. This impressive building and its forecourt, called Spanish Square, were the center of interest when Seville played host to the world with the Great Exposition of 1929. Today it houses various branches of the local city government. Only minutes away by broad boulevard through a charming park, you will find a companion building in the Americas Square, now used as the archeological museum. You'll learn the cathedral except for St. Peter's is the largest in Europe, but perhaps you had enough churches. You'll push off, but just glance over your shoulder at that tower, my friend. You'll see it again from the palace window. Maybe it was a mistake to pass it by. Then, someday, you'll be browsing along narrow, balconied streets. You'll turn a corner and come face to face with the famous Geralda Tower once the minaret of a Moorish mosque, so beautiful, it was preserved to become part 
of a Catholic church. Now may we return for a moment to Madrid. We're off by air for another rendezvous with romance, this time to the island of Mallorca. The quick and convenient way to reach this island gem of the Mediterranean is by Iberia Airlines. They have daily service from most Spanish cities. In a couple of hours, they will gently drop you down onto that little spot of land which bears the magical name Mallorca. Even before you reach your hotel, the charm of this place has made you captive. The capital city of Palma is just as you expect it to be. Quaint, shuttered buildings set along streets, any one of which beckons you to come along for a friendly stroll. If you are like most folks, you'll be awed and perhaps find a little lump in your throat as you swing open your hotel window to view for the first time the Mediterranean's most beautiful harbor. It is little wonder the cruise ships make this a regular port of call, year in and year out. It is good to know Atesa has a car rental service on Mallorca because there are so many intriguing places to visit, places just the right distance from Pama to make a one-day round trip the best of fun. For example, you may drive past the port of Polenza toward the north. Finding scenery like this, naturally, you follow on to Formentor at the end of the road. There's a huge luxury hotel there, but I'll wager you find the flower-trimmed terrace deserted because everyone will be on the beach. There are other trips from Pama. An interesting one takes you past waterfront villages to Valdemosa, where Chopin and George Sand live and love. Much of Chopin's immortal music was composed in the gardens and rooms of this monastery. Girls in Balearic costume add atmosphere, and more than that, they are pretty too. On Mallorca, the ladies will want a day or two for shopping. There are many exquisite things to buy at low prices. Odette, our hostess, is a French woman who, 20-some years ago, came here and originated one of Mallorca's most colorful and interesting handicrafts. She could envision ladies' apparel and accessories made more attractive by beads and pearls embroidered in artistic design. But the time and labor involved made the cost prohibitive for all but the most wealthy persons. Here in Mallorca, she found clever, capable girls working at relatively low wages. Here, she could produce the elaborate things she dreamed of at prices most anyone can afford. She began in a small way and today employs over 150 girls. It is one of those success stories with a happy ending. Everyone is pleased. Odette has seen her dreams come true. The girls enjoy their work and are justly proud of their skill. The buyers are elated to find such wonderful things priced within their budget. This cute little trick is built as a cocktail jacket, the cherry for a Manhattan, I presume. Purses, gloves, scarves, even slippers respond to this lovely form of decoration. Then just to add the crowning touch to an ensemble, the same pearls and beads are fabricated into earrings and necklaces. Odette is proudest of her hand-knit sweaters dripping with pearls and beads in matching colors. Well, 
you've spent a few days on Majorca. A farewell dinner on your hotel terrace at twilight, and your visit ends. Here you are in Madrid again, at the Atesa office, the very place from which you started. This is a new day. As Madrid bestirs herself to early morning activity, in other cities throughout Spain, the big coaches are being readied to roll down avenues of adventure. In this film, you have seen some of Spain's scenic beauty, and you have learned a little something of her people. Atesa is proud to have been your host. When you visit Spain, remember, you'll see more if you...